Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, a spectacular disaster is just inevitable. It's Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. So as long as you plan for the worst case scenario, you should be fine, right? It was at this moment that he knew. Ready to cringe at some moments that went horribly wrong? Let's get it on. Balloon Fest Disaster Balloons are pretty weird when you think about it. Apparently, there's nothing that says friendship quite like gifting someone a colorful bag full of your breath and saliva. Tell that to the city of Cleveland, who in 1986 attempted to release a world record number of helium-filled balloons, over 1.5 million of them all at the same time. But due to unfavorable weather, it forced an early release. and rain prevented the balloons from popping once they reached a high altitude. It's just about the only time you'd want your bubble to burst, but no. The end result of six months of planning and 2,500 balloon-filling volunteers was a city in total chaos, brought to a standstill. Cars crashed in the streets. The airport was shut down, and rescue efforts of emergency services were hampered so badly by the brightly colored descending orbs that two men perished out at sea, resulting in a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the city. One too many coconuts. Karate practitioners condition their bodies to be as hard as stone and enjoy nothing better than seeing what sort of inanimate objects they can break with their bare fists. Timber, ice, roof tiles, anything's a fair game. This guy wanted to attempt the world record for karate chopping coconuts. The aim was to break 90 of the hard, furry nuts in under a minute. Okay, now take a deep breath and miss. That's okay, there's extras on the end. Just keep moving. The second one gets bent, but not broken. The third, double miss. The fourth, miss. Try to ignore the sound of the bones in your hands snapping as they're wrapped around a solid steel beam with brutal force. My question is, what the hell? Now it's getting painful. He successfully smashed the record for most times a hand has been busted up on a steel beam. Not to worry though, no coconuts were harmed in this masterful demonstration of skill and power. Martial Arts Exposed Bruce Silva is a lifetime student and teacher of Shaolin Kung Fu, who set up an interesting demonstration live on national television. The Grandmaster was set to break a concrete slab weighing 21.2 pounds. Sounds easy enough, but the difficulty is ramped up by a hundredfold when he reveals that he'll do so by transferring all the power through a drinking glass. With the force of a gentle zephyr, Bruce does the impossible. That's incredible! The glass is intact and the block lies broken on the ground. In an attempt to verify that the bricks are real, the Sunrise host taps on an even thicker block right next to it with his finger, crumbling it in the process. To be honest, I actually felt these bricks. These are real bricks. I mean, there's there's no joke. Oh, oh, oh! oh. Wow! He's given away the secret. The blocks are porous fakes. <laughs> <laughs> the host can't contain his laughter as the Shaolin Grandmaster breaks another five blocks with his head, letting out an unimpressive sigh between chuckles. You know what? Either way, that was impressive. That was good job. Good job. Base jump plunge. Now, things can go terribly wrong, even for the most experienced people in the most seemingly controlled circumstances. And luckily for Richard Hendrickson, there are even emergency plans for when that happens. The professional base jumper and gymnast was all set to perform the most daring stunt of his career on national television, doing an aerial gymnastics routine on a bar bolted to the edge of a 3,937-foot-high cliff. At first, everything seemed great. Richard was putting on the show of a lifetime and having a blast until everything suddenly went downhill. Literally. The crowd panicked as the bar collapsed as though it were made of toothpicks, sending Richard helplessly hurtling nearly 4,000 feet down to certain doom. The terror is palpable in this chilling moment, but luckily, this is why you always need a backup plan. By incredible luck, Richard missed hitting his body on the cliff by mere inches and was able to deploy his emergency parachute and miraculously survive this terrifying near tragedy. <laughs> Cybertruck Launch the Tesla Cybertruck looks like the love child of the time-traveling DeLorean from Back to the Future and a cheese grater. What the hell is even that? It's an awesome bit of kit, and Elon Musk looked like the cat that got the cream when he unveiled his newest creation to the world. A burly man in black armed with a sledgehammer showed the crowd that while a mere mortal car door would be dented, the exoskeleton of the Cybertruck seemed impervious to damage. A steel ball impact breaks regular car glass, no surprises here. The same steel ball dropped from 10 
times as high bounced off the Tesla armor glass. Now that's impressive. Musk was so confident, he asked his muscular assistant to throw the steel ball at the Cybertruck and, drumroll please, shattered it. Daddy, chill. They then tried another window and broke that one too, leaving Musk to offer excuses while wiping egg off his face. Snowboarding Premature Celebration Lindsay Jacob Ellis is one of the most decorated competitors to ever strap a snowboard onto her feet. She knows better than anyone else that a win is a win, whether it's by an inch or a mile. The race starts off with all four riders even. Jacob Ellis inches in front and gets the inside line. It's looking pretty good. One of the riders eats a face full of snow coming out of the first turn, and Jacob Ellis surges to the lead as another one bites the dust. And it's clear that all she needs to do is stay on her board to guarantee victory. That is, until the last jump. Jacob Ellis gets caught up in the moment and attempts a method grab mid-air so she can sail across the finish line in style but absolutely stacks it. Horrified onlookers watch as the second place rider makes up ground and claims the gold. Whoops! The Kinetic King's Worst Nightmare so you've made it into America's Got Talent. Whether you have any or not, it all starts out great. The final countdown is blaring out of the stadium speakers. A quartet of lab assistants dance on stage. Life is good. The Kinetic King has the judges and the audience in the palm of his hand. The anticipation is so thick you can cut it with a knife. All that's left to do is to pull the trigger but nothing happens. What follows is an anticlimactic train wreck. The audience lets out a monumental sigh of disappointment as the king himself frantically races up on stage in a futile salvage effort. His 36-hour setup is a bust. Despite trying over and over, the mechanical genius left the crowd and judges sorely disappointed as their expectations for something like this were sadly only met with this. A fallen king to be sure, but you gotta hand it to the guy. It took creativity and dedication just to make it as far as he did. Maybe one day he'll reclaim his title, but for now he's been demoted from his royal position. Face ID fail. Anyone with an iPhone will tell you, Face ID is awesome. All you have to do is look at your phone, swipe up, and boom, it opens instantly. Great for the people out there with the memory of a goldfish. A few years back, though, Apple's senior vice president, Craig Federighi, was live on stage and giving a demonstration of this new easy to use feature. The only problem was it didn't work. Ho, ho, ho. Let's, uh,. Go to back up here. Nothing has ever been more simple, natural, and effortless were the words he was forced to eat as he had to resort to the passcode backup to get into his phone not one, not two, but three times. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The audience was dead silent, and when the feature finally worked, felt obligated to give him thunderous, over-the-top applause. We want an invite to the pity party. We'll even bring snacks. Barney's Bitter End the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade has been an American tradition for almost a century. People come for one thing and one thing only, the giant inflated parade floats. And these oversized helium-filled balloons are held down by dozens of people on the ground who use their body weight to tether the ropes to. But in 1997, an extraordinarily strong gust of wind got the better of the people parading Barney the Dinosaur down the main street. One of the ropes snapped, then another, and another as Barney lurched back and forth between the crowds lining the sidewalk. People did their utmost best to get the runaway dinosaur under control before the wind tore him asunder to shock streams from young children in the crowd. There's no trauma quite like childhood trauma. 